Today in the shop, Yamaha XT350. And we'll be taking the top end off of this thing. This is pretty much the worst video ever made. Napoleon, like anyone can even know that. Hello my friends, and welcome to Tom's Tinkering and Adventures. Today we're going to be working on this Yamaha XT350. Um, I'll have to look at the year. I think this is a early 80 or mid 80s model. But uh, anyway, it has some seepage down here, the base gasket, and a little bit up here too. So the owners want um, to replace the gaskets on there. So that's what we're going to do. Let's get started. Okay, looking at the frame, it's a 86 model, but I don't know as if any of these changed a whole heck of a lot, but um, this thing was brought over to me in the condition that it's in right now. So I'm gonna take the seat off, and take the tank off. It's gonna just be disconnecting the fuel line. This bike runs okay. Um, I think it might not have very good compression because I have removed the automatic decompression lever and I can push this thing through with my hand. And I ran a compression test on it. And it's got about 90, maybe just about 100 PSI compression. It seems a little bit low to me. But I guess we'll see what's underneath here. The story I got was that this engine was rebuilt. Who knows what that means? Um, and the carburetor had been gone through, uh, riding it around. It just seemed like it's very sluggish and I don't know. I've never ridden one of these, so I don't know. But it seems a lot more sluggish than I would think a 350 would. But anyway, we'll get this fuel tank off and I'll get cracking on it. I don't know why Honda and Yamaha, I don't know if anyone else did it, but I don't know why they did the uh, twin carb thing on single cylinder bikes. But you kind of have like a primary and a secondary, kind of like a old four, four barrel type thing going on. Kind of a pain to tune them. But yeah, uh, anyway, carburetor's off. Exhaust head pipe is off. I highly recommend if you're doing something like this, get baggies and put stuff in bags, like this is the bolts for the uh, exhaust. And then you get a uh, Sharpie marker or a piece of tape or whatever, put it on there and label what, where your parts go. That way when you're putting things back together, you know where everything goes because, you know, our memories are one of the first things to go, I've heard, or something like that. Anyway, I'm gonna take the cam cover off next. So here's the manual that I have for this. It's giving me the valve clearance, and the intake valves are good, I just checked them. Exhaust valves are tight, well uh, below the low limit. I can't even get a four thousandths, and I think 12 thousandths or 13 thousandths was the, the low limit. So I do need to see if I have shims for this thing. That's likely a cause of our um, low compression numbers, but we'll figure that out as we go. So cam covers off. Now I gotta remove the cams and the cam caps or the cam sprockets here, cam caps, the um, cam chain tensioner right here. So I'll start removing all that stuff. Um, I think to set the cam timing, I got to pull this cover off over here. So I'll take that off and make sure everything is timed correctly as well. Okay, the cams are off. Pretty easy. Four bolts on each. Remove the cam caps. Make sure you watch out for these alignment dowels. They'll stick in the engine. And if you're not careful, you can drop them right down into here and then you'll be fishing. And make sure that you put a piece of wire on your cam chain so it doesn't drop in there. Otherwise, you'll be fishing again. And uh, didn't have to remove the cam sprockets. There's enough uh, room once you remove the cam chain tensioner out of there. And these cam caps are showing a bit of wear. Probably not amazing, but... What does this thing have on it for miles? Let's look. Oh, 4,000 miles. That's real. Then uh, that's more wear than I would expect to see on something like this. But there you have it. So now 
Oh yeah, that's probably the decompression right there, huh? Yeah, that's a decompression. That holds the valve open. But we're gonna have to figure out what size shims these are. But anyway, now I have to remove the cylinder head. There's a couple of bolts down in there. One there, one over there. Gotta remove this engine mount. Uh, there's probably a, there? probably a couple in there, a couple in there. And I saw at least one nut right there and another one there. So I'll get those all loosened up, take this oil line off as well. And then our cylinder head should be ready to come off. There's all the bolts you need to remove to get the cylinder head off. So now we should be just about ready to go and uh, get yourself a, like a soft hammer. Oops, the carburetor. <laughs> I had that still hooked up. I should just disconnect that or tie it down. But you can see everything is moving already, the cylinder and everything. So I got to get them apart right here in the middle. Now, if you're gonna pry on anything, you always wanna pry gently because if you have to pry some apart, chances are you're doing something wrong. It might take a little bit of doing to get stuff off, but not a lot. But everything is separated now. Um, let me see if I can set this in the holder and we'll pull this off. Just gotta get up and over that. So it's a little bit of gymnastics, you know, you gotta hold this up pull it up and over and then drop this down underneath it. Cam machine, that is. The cam chain guide is getting a little hung up. Let's pull the front one out. There we go. Front one is out. And now, there we go. Cylinder head is off. Doesn't look too bad. We'll set that down here and we'll look at the piston. Piston looks pretty good. From what we can see here, anyway. There's your cam chain. See how that. Piece of wires helping us. And here's our cylinder head gasket. Got a new one of those as well. So now we can remove our cylinder. Okay, now the cylinder up and over. cylinder initial glance it looks pretty good so I'll take a good look at that and uh, we'll start putting her back together once I get everything cleaned up our base gasket doesn't look amazing but I think it was leaking over on this side it doesn't look terrible there but it's definitely old and crumbly so We'll clean that all off, put a new base gasket on. We have to clean off the surface over here as well. So I'll be stuffing rags all in here to keep all that out of there as I clean that up. And look for alignment dowels on these as well. So there's an alignment dowel there and there. I'll look on the, well, I guess if my computer cooperates, I'll look on there and make sure that there's only supposed to be two. It's likely. It's common with a job like this that, uh, you know, taking it apart, putting it together doesn't take all that long. Cleaning things up does. So this gasket is just baked on here. So I've been working at it slowly. Um, I got a 
scraper and a wire brush and a soft pad here. So you don't want to put a lot of pressure. You don't want to scrape too deep. This is aluminum, so you can very easily gouge this. Just take your time. It's annoying, but I've already spent probably as much time cleaning this and the actual engine case as I did removing all this stuff. So uh, getting it nice and clean is going to be big part of getting this thing to seal properly. So take your time, do a good job. So I have a slab of uh, granite countertop here and I put some 600 wet dry sandpaper on here. And that's what I use to surface the top of the cylinder. And I'll use that to surface the uh, cylinder head as well. Just kind of go round and round. Don't, don't back and forth like that. Figure eights if you can, but I'll just do some clockwise, some counterclockwise. Let's see, clockwise, counterclockwise. Wax on, wax off. And uh, we'll get it all cleaned up and do a little garage surfacing on it. It should be okay. Okay, I put the alignment pins in here and put the gasket down. I put a little tiny bit of um, gasket sealant on there and I'm probably gonna put a little bit on top of it as well. Or maybe I'll put it on here. You're probably really not supposed to do that, but this cylinder's kind of old. And there's some gouges you can see in there. So I think a tiny little bit of gasket sealant on there. It's probably gonna help seal this thing up. So I'll put it on and let it tack up and then I'll slide this thing on here. And anytime you're putting an engine together, make sure you're using some assembly lube. Even if you don't have this fresh clean oil, it's gonna be better than you know putting things together dry. So I'm gonna put a little bit on the piston rings, put some in the cylinder here. And then, of course, once we get the cams on, you put some in the cam journals and on top of the um, lobes and on the shims here. Don't forget, we got to check those shims for the exhaust. Okay. Slowly but surely. We should be able to squeeze these rings on by hand, just about. There you go. It's looking okay. And where's that thing? There we go. Try not to fight it too much. Or let it fight you, I guess. There we go. Off camera, I removed the exhaust valves. Well, of course, the shim buckets here, the valves. I replaced the valve seals. They were all really hard and crusty and crunchy. There's a lot of oil around here, burnt oil. The springs on here were all coated with burnt oil. And uh, when I had this thing, when I was cleaning up the bottom of it, I sprayed some brake clean around the valves. In there, and it was leaking through on the uh, exhaust side into the exhaust ports. So that's why I did that. Um, I lapped the valves with my valve lapper here, all the fancy stuff. But uh, anyway, lots of time spent on this. Like I said, just getting a gasket on, piece of cake, stuff like this. It is very time consuming. Um, I have a few other videos showing how to do that. But, uh, you know, this could be a full four or five hour video if I showed every single step. But uh, anyway, I check these uh, shims they're both 232s but uh, since there was so much oil build up on there i cleaned it up maybe we'll have good clearance now who knows um, but at least i know what size shims they are so when i put it together if i don't have clearance then we can adjust that out so let's get this cylinder head put on 
Got the gasket sitting on there right now already. And uh, I sprayed it down with some Permatex copper spray because this is a cheap aftermarket uh, gasket kit. And I just don't trust them that much. So better safe than sorry. So the Permatex probably will provide a little bit of extra support. on there all right we're just fighting one of the dowels and then we'll be on this is the point where the manual is really important because it tells you uh torque values for our cylinder head bolts here so 29 foot pounds for the four long ones here, and then 7.2 foot-pounds for the small ones on the side in the uh, cam chain tunnel there. And there's probably even a torque for these other little ones right there, I'm guessing. 14 foot-pounds. So I'll get out my torque wrench, we'll torque those down, and then move on to the cam shaft install. And it looks like the cam cap bolts are right there, 7.2 foot-pounds. Here the manual also shows how to uh, line up the cam so you have timing correctly. So you can follow this. I did a little cheat. And I marked the flywheel right here with the igniter. So I don't have to take this side cover off. So that should be top dead center. And then I can line up these holes just like it shows in the picture so I'm gonna get this all lubricated and install these things okay so what you're looking for is that little hole there to be parallel you see the bolts are gonna be parallel too and the lobes pointing out so I put assembly lube on pretty much everything here I'll put assembly lube on these cam caps I'm probably gonna tighten down these uh, exhaust ones and check the clearance real quick at this point. All right, I was trying to be optimistic, but uh, these valves are still tight. And uh, there's two, 232 shims in there, 25 millimeter. And most kits, 230 is the smallest that uh, they have. So now I'm in a bit of a pickle here. Um, I found a place that does sell some smaller shims, but it'll be a couple days before I get them. So I'm going to wrap it up for the day here, throw a towel over this engine, and uh, well, maybe I can put the, put the carburetors back on. We'll see. But uh, We're done for now. We'll get back to it once I get those shims because there ain't no use for me to seal up this top end without getting those adjusted properly. It took me a couple days to find some shims for this thing. The uh, shim size below 230 was not easy to find. Uh, I had to order some online, but I got some and I have the exhaust valves in spec and intake valves are in spec. I wrote those down. I highly recommend anytime that you work on something that you write them down, it makes it a lot easier. And if you can write down the valve shim sizes, then it definitely makes it easy for the next person. So I put a 220 in that side and a 226 in this side so let's say that this one uh, needs to be adjusted again and i already know that it has a 226 i don't even have to take it apart if it measures you know five thousandths below spec then i have to buy a 220 for that size um well, can come in like 220 225 but i was able to find a 226 whatever it works so now we have our cam timing set up already so i'm going to show you how to uh, do this um, particular um, cam chain tensioner there's a bunch of different ones but a lot of the japanese ones are similar to this there's a little screw inside of here so you get yourself a little screwdriver you put it in there and on this one you turn it clockwise i'll see if i can show you here while i'm turning it clockwise it's bringing this extender in see how it's getting shorter 
they make a little special tool and I had made one myself actually that you can turn and stick it in there so it's kind of like a little screwdriver with legs on it and it will stick into those little bits there but if you don't have one uh, if you're lucky like this one there's plenty of room to get in here so you need kind of three hands to do it sometimes but a lot of times what I'll do is I'll get these things started and then once they're started it's much easier you know, blocking everything so I get the screws started And if you slip off of it, that's okay. Uh, you want to take the tension off. You don't want to put it in under tension because then you're going to have full tension on that um, cam chain tensioner and that will stretch the chain out and wear bearings out and all kinds of bad stuff. But anyway, I'll get these tightened down, torqued down, and then we got to put the valve cover, cam cover, whatever you want to call it on. Then we're just about done. I gotta put the exhaust on. In the meantime, I put the carburetors on here. Um, what else are we missing still? That engine mount right there. We're getting there. All right, I'm putting on some new exhaust gaskets here. Sometimes these can be a pain in the butt. You're trying to hold them up in here and they keep falling out. So I have a tube of some old grease here. And I just put a little bit of grease on the gasket itself. couple dabs of it. A little dab will do ya. And then put it in there and the grease will hold it. The grease will burn off. It's going to smoke a little bit. That's okay. Yeah, I already put one on that side. So put it on this side over here. There you go. Now the grease is holding it in there. And then when I put the exhaust head pipe in there, and then it'll hold it in there. Tips and tricks from Tom. All right, I'm gonna show you that it runs here. I got it started already and uh, it doesn't run great for some reason. I messed with the carburetor a little bit while it was off. So maybe I need to uh, mess with that again, but hopefully she'll start again for the video. and it did make a little bit of a mess I popped off I just loosened this top line here to make sure oil was getting up to the cylinder head and yes it was everywhere so there's oil everywhere but that's because of that so I will take these carburetors off again and see if I can figure out what's going on and uh, other than that it does run <laughs> I can get it to start and get it to idle okay, but it's still not very good. Not good at all, actually. Terrible. But that has nothing to do with the way that uh, the engine is put together. So the mechanical part is just fine. Put some water on there and some degreaser and cleaned up the spilled oil so I can check to see if there was any more oil leaks and everything's looking good. And I think that uh, I fixed the carburetor overflow, but who knows, maybe I have to go in there and mess with the um, float height. But uh, these carburetors are a work of art of the 80s here, dual carburetor setup. I don't know a lot about them, so. I'm not gonna mess with that on this video because this video was more about the engine than the carburetors. Well, this Yamaha has been a struggle the whole way and it's still fighting me, but that's okay. The mechanical part is done. So uh, I'll work on the tuning. And if I decide to make a video on that, I definitely will. I'm not sure, um, but I am working on this for someone else who's working on it for someone else. It's kind of like, uh, you know, I'm working on it for a, uh, 
mechanic buddy of mine who got it from someone else and he was a little bit overwhelmed so I might just turn it back over to him because he had too much going on to get that engine part of it done so maybe I'll give it back to him and he can do those carburetors because man those things are fun all right anyway if you're uh, enjoying my content give me a thumbs up leave a comment down below and if you're not already a subscriber please consider doing so thank you very much for watching get out there and find your adventure Adios.